Module 11, we are now up to. So this is the chemistry of solutions. And the first thing we need to discuss are some of the terms. In a solution, we often talk about the solute. The solute is the substance being dissolved. So the easiest, maybe first thing that comes to my head is salt water. When you dissolve salt in water, you end up with salt water. The solute is the salt. I need a different colored marker and I'll write. Okay, so like for example, salt. The solute would be the salt. The solvent is the substance the solute is being dissolved in. So in the case of salt water, the solvent would be water. And then finally, the solution. The solution is the solute mixed in the solvent, which in our example, would be salt water. So that is what we are discussing this module. It's all about solutions. Solutes dissolved in solvents making up solutions. All right, the first thing we will talk about is how solutes dissolve in solvents. And we're gonna start with ionic solutes. Remember, Ionic compounds are those that have a metal and a non-metal. So an ionic solute is something that we're going to be dissolving in um, a solvent and it's going to be a metal and a non-metal. An ionic solvent, um, also look at figure 11.1. .1. You can see in this figure, the solute In this example, it is actually salt, NaCl, begins as a solid and it is tightly packed together. Remember when we talked about states of matters, a solid actually has the atoms of the compound closely packed together. When it becomes a liquid, the atoms are a little bit more spaced apart from one another. When it's a gas, they're even more spaced apart from one another because they are warmer, they have more energy, they're running around, they're bumping into each other, so they need more room. But as a solid, they are not moving so fast. Uh, their temperature would be lower and they're tightly packed together. Also, as a note, not all solutes are solids. You can even have a liquid or a gas solute. But in this first example, example we're talking about NaCl and it does start as a solid. Okay, then when the solute dissolves, the solid changes to a liquid. When the solute dissolves, The solid changes to liquid. So the NaCl molecules must be pulled apart the NaCl NaCl molecules must be pulled apart to separate Na plus and Cl minus ions. So what happens when a solute dissolves is those atoms actually get pulled apart from one another and the compound actually gets pulled apart from one another making up separate ions. In the example of table salt, we have sodium ion and chlorine ion. Okay, uh, when the solute dissolves, you need something that is able to pull those molecules apart. Water can do that. Water, the solvent, can do this. Pull those molecules apart. Water can do this. 
because it is polar. Remember what polar means. One end is more negative and one end is more positive. And you're gonna to wanna to see figure 11.2 for that. Okay, so if we imagine what's happening at the molecular level, the positive end of water, the positive end of the H2O attracts the Cl negative ion, that's an L, and the negative end of water attracts the positively charged and A plus. And to see a picture of that, look at figure 11.3. Okay, and let me just draw water over here. So water, we talked about shapes of molecules. Water has a bent shape and oxygen is more electronegative. So just because they're sharing these electrons doesn't mean they have to share those electrons equally, right? So because oxygen is more electronegative, it has a stronger pull, meaning that the electrons spend more time circling around the oxygen than they do around the hydrogen. So the hydrogens have partially positive charges and the oxygen has a partially negative charge. And then for the molecule as a whole, you can see that this half of the molecule would have an overall positive charge and this half would have a negative charge, making the molecule polar. And then the different ends of the water molecule attract the different ions apart from one another in the table salt. So the NaCl then gets separated into Na plus and Cl minus by the polar nature of the water. Another sentence to add down here. Sometimes ionic bonds, sometimes ionic bonds of the solute, the thing being dissolved, are stronger than the polar pull of water or whatever solvent you have and the solute then won't separate. Sometimes depending on what your solute is, the water, the polarity of water is not strong enough to break those bonds in the ionic compound. So then it stays as a compound, it doesn't get broken apart, and the solid will not dissolve. Solutes that won't dissolve, solutes that won't dissolve are called insoluble. Insoluble. And that's why, because they have stronger bonds within their own molecule than the water pulling against them. And so they just won't separate. And so they stay as a solute and they, they won't dissolve. They're insoluble. Okay, so that is for ionic solutes. As you can see in this module, at least as we get started, there's just a lot of writing of like sentences and explaining things. Let's erase this and talk about covalent sol solutes. So that was ionic. I'll leave the top part up there because we're still talking about how solutes dissolve in solvents and we're trying to picture this in our heads, what's going on at the molecular level. So that was ionic and now we will discuss covalent solutes. All right, ready for some more writing? Perfect, because that's what I have in store for you.
All right, covalent solutes. Now we have to remember what a purely covalent compound is. Purely, remember that term? Purely covalent compounds have purely covalent bonds. Where the electrons are shared equally. That's what it means when it's purely covalent. So if the electrons are shared equally between the two um, sides of the bond, then there's not going to be any partial charge because the electron spends equal amount of time on this side of the bond and equal amount of time on this side of the bond. So in a purely covalent compound, there are no partial charges. They do not dissolve well in water. because they are not attracted because they're not attracted to the polar water molecules so we say they are insoluble in water okay Remember, positive attracts negative, negative attracts positive. But if you have a purely covalent compound where you don't have a charge at all, there's no positive side, there's no negative side, just because the water is polar and the water has partial charges isn't going to attract the purely covalent compound because there's no positive or negative parts of the purely covalent compound. So it's, it's going to stay as a compound and it's not going to be dissolved. So it's insoluble in water. Now that's purely covalent compounds. Now we'll talk about polar compounds. Polar compounds have polar bonds like water that share electrons unequally. So they have partial electric charges. Well, I'll just say partial charges, positive and negative. Okay? For example, HCl. That's a covalent bond. They're sharing the electrons between the hydrogen and the chlorine, but the chlorine is much more electronegative, so it draws the electrons to hang out by it more often, giving it a partially negative charge. The hydrogen is usually without any electrons, so it has a partially positive charge. That's an example of a polar compound. These dissolve similarly to ionic compounds or I'm going to say ionic, yeah, ionic compounds, sure. But they remain intact as partially charged molecules. So instead of separating into two ions like the ionic compounds do, the Polar compounds remain as molecules, but they just have a negative side and a positive side. So for that, see figure 11.4 and 11.5. And that is going to finish up our first video for module 11 and talking about solutions.